Paul Radilavich from Synergy Electrical Sales. Today I'm going to cover the Lutron Vive components. I'm going to show you the most common parts and pieces that you would see on commercial projects, commercial office, commercial education projects. I'm going to cover them in the way that you would see them on an electrical drawing on a wiring diagram, just to give you the basic overview uh, of what they are. I'm not going to cover every component, but again, just the ones that we're seeing most often. So. On the upper left of the drawing is where you often see this device. This is our Vive hub, our Lutron Vive hub. It goes in the ceiling, either on a ceiling tile or above the ceiling, and it communicates to the other devices that I'm going to show you. When I say communicate, it sends time clock signals, and it also allows us to program the system with a, a smartphone so we don't have to access the ceiling and does some nice features with it. So this is a device. Um, Right here, it has a 24 volt power supply, which I'll show you the other end in a second. That plugs in here. Um, it has an ethernet jack that's not required to program the system. Um, but if you wanted to attach to your building network, this is where you would do it. Or if you have uh, a backnet communication that you want to uh, engage as well, this is where you do it with the ethernet. Like I said, it does have uh, a power supply. It looks like this. It's 120 or 277 power supply that goes out to the hub. So we'll show you those components. All right, as far as what turns the lights on and off, again, most commercial projects, we're seeing a device that looks like this. Um, this is what we call a power pack with wireless communication capability. So it turns the lights on and off and dims it from this um, device. Zero to 10 volt dimming. So another one I have wired up. Again, it would look like this. There's two versions. There's one version that has the zero to 10 here, and there's another one that has it in the box. Wireless devices, you always install it outside the box. I've got other videos on that um, as well. This is one device. Um, I'm gonna show you that it's here, that again, you have to understand uh, the purpose. I won't get into the strict requirements of it, but this is a power pack that is UL924 rated for um, emergency lighting controls. So that's what it looks like. Again, you need to be up on exactly how you would use it. We can offer further assistance with that, but that is the device. So we've got our load controllers in the space and most people like to turn their lights on and off with a switch. So we have them. This is our Pico wall switch. Okay. You can see the side of it. It is completely wireless, has a battery that goes in the back. It's rated for 10 years. That's the Pico wireless switch and screwless faceplate that goes with it. All right, and again, I'm moving generally what you would see from left to right on a, a wiring diagram. This is our ceiling mounted occupancy sensor. It's NEMA rated for sensing fine motion. It has a battery as well rated for 10 years. Uh, commercial office, we generally recommend putting this 20 feet on center for office projects. If you had a classroom, you would want to use two of these. Um, the Vive system also has wall-mounted sensors. These would mount between six feet and eight feet high. Uh, they can see much further out into space. So this one can see up to 60 feet away, and we have a hall sensor that can go even up to 100 feet. So that if you're, let's say you're doing a project where you have um, mostly office, but you also have some storage space, with it, that's where you'd probably want to use this, or perhaps on long hallways. And then this is our daylight sensor, um, again, which is wireless. It senses daylight in two ways. One points out the window, the other right below it. So it does a nice job for that. Um, so those are the components. I uh, forgot to cover one here, but I'm gonna go back to it right now. Um, generally, we find a commercial project is usually one or two zones of what we might think of as incandescent dimming, or ELV dimming, we have a device like this. This is the Maestro dimmer. It's in gray, the reason it's in gray, when it comes in gray, it is plenum rated. So often, if we're doing a project, um, we might put this in a closet somewhere, uh, if we didn't want to show it in the space, or it can also go up in the ceiling, and then we would sync one of our Pico devices to work with it, to turn the lights on and off. That's 120 volt um, rated as well. And then lastly, I'm gonna show you our in-wall motion sensor, which I really like the way this looks. Um, if you wanted to do simple on-off dimming right here 
at the sensor. We've got it right here. Um, one nice feature is it will, with the Vive system, talk to this sensor if you needed um, just to add an extra sensor. If your room might have a kind of a unique shape to it, like an elf shape, and you needed a sensor around the corner, install this and just put this in the ceiling as well. Again, those are the components. Just wanted to give you a basic overview so that you understand them as you might see them on an electrical job. As always, thanks for watching.